All right, so we're going to talk about postulates and measuring segments. This is the continuation of section 1, 2, and 1, 3 in our geometry book. Okay? So, postulate or axiom is an accepted statement of fact. Okay? So, that's going to be something that is true. Okay? Uh, postulate 1.1. One. Um, through any two points, there's exactly one line. <clears throat> now, these postulate numbers here, this is only for our book. It, they could be different throughout. It's just saying that this is the first one we're coming to. Chapter 1, first postulate. Okay? So if I have point A and I have uh, point B, there is only one line that connects those two points. Okay? Where that line show up. <clears throat> All right. Intersection. Intersection is the set of point or points the figures have in common. So if we're talking about uh, two lines, those two lines could intersect never, once, or always within the same, same line. So if we look for an intersection, so postulate one, two, if two distinct, distinct lines, that's why that word is in there, uh, intersect, they intersect in exactly one point. So we wanna have that word distinct in there because that, that way we don't have lines that are overlapping, okay? So here's my first line. I have a second line. Notice these are distinct. They're not overlapping. They will intersect in one point right there, okay? And that point where they intersect is E, so that is point E, okay? So that's intersection of uh, postulate one, three. If two planes intersect, and I probably should two, say two distinct planes, then they intersect in exactly one line. So if I have two distinct planes that are going to intersect, they're going to intersect in one line. Okay? <clears throat> Keep going. All right, so tab over to the... All right, so here we are. Go ahead and hit play for the first part here. Why is that no problem? problem? You will find the intersection of two planes. Each surface of the box shown represents part of a plane. What is the intersection of plane ABC and plane BFG? Okay, so we want to look at plane ABC. So we want to find where that plane is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of color it in with orange. So I'm going to go over here to my diagram here, and I have ADC. Okay, so here's ADC. So that is kind of this top plane right here in your box. Okay, you can look at this in your book and it's that top plane. Okay? So now we're going to look at plane BFG. So here's B, here's F, here's G. So it's this side plane right here. And I notice now that where they intersect would be this line right here. This line segment. So where they intersect, I'm going to say they intersect at line segment BC. Okay? Now, this is a, if these extended, I would make this line BC. So if these planes, if I'm saying this isn't just a cube, this is actually planes up there. They remember planes extend indefinitely in two directions. So they would intersect at line BC. Okay? So go ahead and go back to the slides. Okay, so here's a, another uh, item here. So these two planes, so I have plane uh, F, B, G right here, kind of going up and down. And I have plane C, B, E kind of going horizontally. And these two planes, where they intersect, is right along this line. Now, I could name this line AB, DA, DB, BA, all kinds of different things, okay? So, but they intersect right along that line, okay? Go ahead and go to the next one. <clears throat> Postulate 1, 4. Through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. So, if I have three points that aren't on a line, they're going to form a plane. <clears throat> So notice these three points are not on the same line, so they would form a plane. And then I would name that plane by those points. 
Okay? Okay, so go back to the, and then let's go down to the next uh, problem. So, partially that one for you, yep. All right, so use the figure at right. What plane contains points N, P, Q? Okay, so I have points N, P, Q. The nice thing is, they already gave you the plane. Are these three non-collinear points? Yes, they are. So I would say plane N, P, Q. Okay, and I'm gonna shade it that bottom piece right there uh, of that diagram. Okay. So that's kind of going to be able, you should be able to name planes um, if you're just going to take three letters and name them. Okay. Back to the slides. Okay, ruler postulate. Okay, or 1, 5. So a lot of books you're going to see this written as the ruler postulate. So every point on a line can be paired with a real number. Kind of like that number line. Most of you guys are really familiar with the number line. This makes a one-to-one -one correspondence between points and the line and the real numbers. Okay? The real number that corresponds to the points is called the coordinate of the point. Okay? So we kind of create that number line. So go ahead and click on that. The distance between the points A and B is the absolute value of the difference. Okay, we just don't want negative because we always measure distance as a positive value. Okay. Okay. So here's my, uh, keep going. So there's point A, I have point B. Okay. So if I put those on a, if I put this on a number line, I could put this at zero and this at a corresponding number. And then I can find the distance between. That's all a ruler postulate says. When you're measuring distance on this, you take your ruler, you correspond this with the number and this with the different. Okay? All right. Segment addition postulate. If three points, A, B, and C, are collinear, and B is between A and C, then A, B plus B, C equals A, C. So here's our diagram. Okay. So here I have three points on this, this segment here. And you're going to see. So what this really is trying to get at is the sum of the parts adds up to the whole. Okay. So we want to make sure that we can, here's A, B. You notice if I add B, C to it, I get the entire segment. Okay, that's what the segment addition postulate is getting at. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so let's go back to the. You're gonna have to. Okay. So go to. Let's go to Utah. Let me pause this. We're going. Okay, so In here. This problem, we have. We the segment addition postulate. If the length of segment EG equals 59, what are the lengths of segment EF and segment FG? Okay, so we're looking at this whole thing here, right? We said this whole thing is 59, all right? So notice here that each of these is part of it. EF is part, and FG are part of this 59. So we're going to add these together. So what we're going to do is we're going to say EF, plus FG equals EG, right? Well, I know all these parts. So this is going to be 8X minus 14 plus 4X plus 1 equals 59. Now this is algebra, back to algebra 1. 8X plus 4X gives me 12X. Negative 14 plus 1 is negative 13 equals 59. I'm going to now isolate my, my variable my variable, so I'm going to add 13. So I'm going to end up with 12x equals uh, 72. And I'm going to divide by 12. <clears throat> and I get x equals 6. Okay? Well, this is nice that x equals 6. All right? 
But that's not what it asked for. It asked for the length of EF and FG. So I need to take this 6 and plug it back in. So EF is going to be 8 times 6 minus 14. 8 times 6 is 48. Minus 14 is going to give me 34. Now, since I already have EF, I could find FG by a couple of different ways. I could take the 6, plug it in. 4 times 6 plus 1, 24 plus 1 equals 25. I also could have went, well, FG is the difference between EG and EF. So I could have said, oh, it's 59 minus 34, which is 25. Okay? So that's using that segment addition postulate. Okay, go back to the slides. Ah, click to the next one. Congruent. So congruent means it has the same uh, length and shape. All right. So what we'll do for congruent is um, if two items are congruent, then they are also equal. So this is basically means equal and similar. Uh, <clears throat> congruent segments are labeled by a hash mark. So we're going to put a hash mark through these because these are congruent. If I put two hash marks here, that means that the one with two hash marks is also congruent. Okay? All right, so let's go to problem three on, on digits. Yep. Click on that and then bring it down. Yep, next one down. Just comparing segment lengths. There we go. In this problem, you will compare segment lengths. Are segments AC and BD congruent? Okay, so this is using that ruler postulate. So I'm looking at this distance right here. Well, this is 5 and this is negative 2. So to find that distance, I'm going to go 5 minus minus 2, and that gives me 7. Now I look at BD. So this is 10. And this is 3. So I would go 10 minus 3 is 7. So are these equal? Yes. So these are congruent. AC is congruent to BD. And that makes, hopefully that makes sense for using that ruler postulate. Okay, back to slides. Go ahead and pause. All right, so here we are. Um, we're going to talk about midpoint. So the midpoint of the segment is a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. A lot of times people think of that as being kind of the middle. That's fine. It's not really an arbitrary uh, de designation, but midpoint. So here we are, uh, midpoint. So o, if O is my midpoint, it's just going to say that AO is congruent to OB. Okay. Segment bisector. So a segment bisector is a point, line, ray, or other segment that uh, intersects a segment at its midpoint. So here, line L here would be a segment bisector because it's bisecting AB. Okay. All right. So let's look at a problem out of your book. All right, so Q is the midpoint of PR. What are PQ, QR, and PR? Okay, so I know that as soon as I see this word midpoint, I know that PQ and QR are equal. Okay, so I'm going to go up and say, okay, this is a key word. So then PQ equals QR. So now I'm going to substitute in each of these. 6x minus 7 equals 5x plus 1. Now we got to work on our algebra. So I, I always start with moving. If I have multiple variables, I always start by moving my variables first. Okay? Um, 
Does it really matter which one you move first? No, it does not. I always take the smaller variable, the smaller coefficient on the variable and move it. So I'm going to subtract my 5x over. So this gives me x minus 7 equals 1. And now I'm going to get rid of the 7. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. x equals 8. Okay? So that gives me the value of x. Does that answer my question? No, because it asks for what is PQ, QR, and PR. Well, if I know PQ, I already know QR, right? And PR is just double that. So I'm going to take this 8, and I'm going to plug it into whichever one's easier. Well, to me, multiplying by 5 and adding 1 is probably easier. So I'm going to find QR first. 5 times 8 plus 1, 5 times 8 is 40, plus 1 is 41. So if QR is 41, PQ has to be the same, which is 41. And then PR has to be the addition of these, or 82. Okay, So that's using the midpoint to find a value and find the, the numeric length of PQ, QR, and PR. Okay, back to that. All right. <clears throat> the joke time is, there is no joke. So that's section, uh, the end of 1, 2, and 1, 3.